In this video, we are going to introduce z-spheres. Z-spheres are useful in a lot of different ways. We're just going to talk about them in one context initially. So I'm going to click on my little icon here, the simple brush in my tool menu, and I'm going to select a z-sphere. This is not to be confused with a sphere 3D. Z-sphere is a distinctly different thing. Obviously here it's red and has a couple of different colors on the upper and lower hemispheres. So I'm going to click and drag and tap the T key. So Z-spheres are good for, initially at least, well, the first thing we'll talk about is building a base mesh. So uh, you may also notice that this menu is now populated. Uh, if you've got a regular piece of geometry, it will go away because there's just a few buttons here that are related to Z-spheres only. We don't have to worry about any of this stuff right now. I'm going to go ahead and delete that little star there. So the first thing I want to do is tap the X key. So what that's going to do is that's going to enable symmetry. And you can see as I'm mousing over on one side, I've got a, a corresponding little green circle there on the other side. And when I get to the center, they should snap together. So there isn't really a, a real clear concept of front and back here, but there's definitely a concept of side and side. So it doesn't really matter for what we're doing, uh, like were you to export this geometry into another application like Maya or something, you would probably at that point discover whether or not you'd modeled your thing facing the right direction or not. It's also super easy to uh, just create something in another application and then import it so you know how to, how to orient your geo. But anyway, now I have created two children's z-spheres off of the main z-sphere. So now that I've got three, I can actually turn this into geometry. And the simple way to do that is by tapping the A key. And at this point, these settings are going to be kind of important. The A key, what it's done traditionally, I mean, at this point, this feature has been in place for kind of a long time, so maybe I need to change my verbiage on it. But anyway, it looks kind of low poly, right? But if you take a closer look, you can see it's got all these, like this little subtle warbly stuff going on here. And if I turn on my poly frame, we can see it's actually a super dense mesh. The reason it's dense like this is because it's automatically dynameshing this result. So what I really want here is a low poly mesh that I can work with. So I'm going to take my Dynamesh resolution and I'm going to drag it to zero. That's very, very important. And if I tap the A key and then retap it, you can see now that I have a very clean low poly mesh, except the geo itself is indicated by these black lines. And you can see that there's actually an additional subdivision happening here in that internal face. And that's controlled by this value here, this density slider. So I'm going to set that to one. And now you can see I'm getting the actual low poly mesh that was somewhat suggested by the initial result. But this is actually low poly. So setting the Dynamesh resolution to zero and the density to one is absolutely critical whenever you're working with z-spheres, in my opinion, unless you want it to Dynamesh. But for that to be the default behavior, in my opinion, is kind of strange. So we're in draw mode right now. And what that means is I can continue to add new z-spheres. I'm going to turn off my poly frame. And so long as I keep clicking and dragging, I'm going to keep adding more and more z-spheres. So if I want to modify the position of z-spheres that I've already created, it's very simple to do that. You just need to tap the W key here. And if I go to my transform, I think I probably just selected move. I just don't have this in the UI because it takes up space and there's hotkeys for it. So W is going to be move, rotate. You want to stay away from rotating them is totally possible, but uh, here, I'll just show you an example. So this is the geometry that I've currently created. So I'm just tapping A here to toggle between the two. And if I rotate the Z-sphere, so we'll go to transform just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. So I'm just going to give this a rotate and you can see, yeah, fine. Okay. And I believe, yeah, right. So now we're getting that resulting geometry is rotated. And you almost never want that. I can't really think of it unless you're doing something like really uh, procedural where you wanted a nice clean rotation like that. But there are other ways that are a little bit better, in my opinion, to do that. So you don't really get a good indicator aside from the orientation of the, the hemispheres here of how that z-sphere is oriented. So it's a, just generally a bad idea to do any rotating uh, of that z-sphere. Scaling is open season. Do whatever you want on scaling. It's totally fine. So that is the simplest version of 
working with zspheres. And they're really great. So if you've got a like, here, I'm going to go to a Q, tap Q to go to draw. You can see here that's the, the hotkey. Also, if you just mouse over it, so draw pointer Q, and then move W, scale E, and rotate R. So, you know, if you ever forget what the, uh, what the hotkeys are, it's, it's usually just a matter of mousing over the button, and then you don't have to take up your valuable space with it. So I'm going to go back to cube so I can add some more. And we're going to go to W to move it. If I want to add one in the middle, go to Q mode, and you'll see it will snap, and then I can draw. And we can pull this down, and so on and so forth. So there's one very important thing. I use the Shift key when I'm orienting the camera around my geometry all the time because I want to look at it from the front view or the side view or whatever. And I guess this is actually our indicator. I forgot this thing existed. I never use this thing, but you can kind of see. So if I hold shift, it'll snap. And now I'm, I guess I'm looking straight down in this one case. It's actually kind of useful. So I want this to be pointing down. Like if this was a torso that I was working on, I wouldn't want it to be necessarily all scooted back like that. So that's kind of a, a useful trick, I suppose. All right, so let's say I'm gonna just add a couple more here. Oops, go to Q, draw some more. I'm gonna move these out and go back to Q. Oh yeah, what I was gonna say is, if you are in draw mode and you hold shift to orient the camera, it does something very strange that's not good. So I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So right now I've got, let's say I'll just select this C-sphere. And I'm going to go into draw mode, and then I'm going to hold shift to what I think was going to be orienting the camera, and it doesn't actually orient the camera. It does something very strange, right? So just be aware that if you have your Z-spheres in draw mode, and you hold shift, it's going to do something kind of screwy that you don't necessarily want. And what's happening here is when it gets kind of fuzzy like this or, or um, transparent, that's ZBrush telling you that you have created a configuration of Z-spheres that it doesn't know how to convert into geometry. Right? Again, I'm just going to tap the A key there, and you can see I get nice, clean, regular geometry. That's the goal. You can add Z-spheres inside of existing or whatever these are, bones or branches or whatever the right terminology is, you can remove them. I'm going to go into draw mode and I'm just going to hold alt and click on it. So if I were to hold alt to click on this, you can see I kind of get rid of that. I'm going to scoot this out, go to move mode uh, with the W key, and we can scale these in and so on and so forth. So it's very flexible. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very useful system if you've ever built a base mesh and another tool. You know, that's a pretty easy way to do it. It's important that you treat this, the first Z-sphere as kind of the core. Like it could have been the hip, it could have been the torso here, but you don't really want to think of it as like uh, um, like the end of something potentially. Uh, it may not make that much of a difference, but it's just a good idea to kind of keep it in the middle because occasionally you can end up with, with a strange configuration. So I'm just going to go back a few steps now that we've talked about the generalities. So if I only have two Z-spheres, let's turn my symmetry off for a second. Yeah, that's fine. Just tell me about my undos. Whoops, I think I just hit undo on accident. So if I tap the A key, you can see I'm getting like a strange result here. And the reason is ZBrush needs at least three Z-spheres in order to make an airtight mesh. But once you give it that third Z-sphere, it's going to be good to go. It doesn't really, in this case, the rotations uh, don't seem to be affecting it too much. So I'm going to uh, go to anything other than draw mode, hold the shift key, and you can see how my my little head here is orienting. So I guess this is my, my front view, right? So this is another thing to be aware of is if you begin working and you do not initially enable your symmetry, then you can have a, a, a serious challenge trying to uh, recreate that symmetry. So if for some reason you have begun working on something and you did not immediately turn on symmetry, uh, just restart it because whatever whatever you've done is is going to be asymmetrical and unless that's the goal right if that's the goal then it is what it is but that's almost certainly at, the, at this beginning level of zbrush you would probably not want to do something that is asymmetrical because it's just double the work so there you go all right that's our little introduction this is kind of what happens that's what i normally see with the when you've got draw mode on and you try to use the shift key to orient the camera and i do it all the time because it's it's muscle memory and i don't I don't use the 
like I, you basically will build one base mesh per project, but I orient the camera all the time. So that's my muscle memory. Anyway, it's uh, just a control Z will undo it. And if I tap anything other than draw, I can orient the camera the way I'd like. So anyway, there you go. That's our quick introduction. Actually, I guess there's one more thing. How do I make this into geometry? You can see like it appears as though we're missing this face down here. It's not actually missing. It's just a renderer doing some back face calling. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the make poly mesh 3D here in the tool menu. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave our current Z sphere tool and we're going to go to another tool. So if you want to have a bunch of things that you're creating, you can just append in that tool and so on and so forth. I don't want to overcomplicate it here with the sub tools, but that's how you create a base mesh using Z spheres.